Hey, good morning, friends. Welcome. Come on in. Come to my kitchen. Come to my table. I hope you have your coffee. I have my coffee this morning with one of my favorite mugs. I like a lot of mugs, don't I? I need mascara and caffeine. That's all I need. And Jesus, that's all I need to add to this cup. Good morning. Good to see y'all. Come on in. I see I have some people joining. Stephanie, good morning. Thanks for being here with me today, Linda. Good morning. Good to see you. Actually, I could see y'all. I could like add you and, and and so I haven't tried that yet. We may have to practice it on a special nobody else can see but us saying. Anyway, we'll do that. Robin, good morning. Angela, good morning. Venus, good to see you. Shelly Murphy, good to see you. And Deb Warren. Good to see all my friends this morning. Come on in. Hey, Ruth, good morning. And Shelly is still in Georgia. Steve, good morning. I'm glad you could come. Hey, Tamara, yay. Good to see y'all. Hey, Tamara's um, church is doing the Ruth Bible study. I'm so excited to hear how that goes and how they enjoy that. Janice, good morning. Good to see you. So anyway, in case you missed it, this is my huge big coffee mug this morning. That says all I need is mascara and caffeine. Amen. Anybody else? You just got to have mascara. Okay. Anyway, enough of that. Steve, I'm sure you don't need mascara at all. Let's hold our hands. Let's pray us up. Cindy Sproles. Good morning, Kim. I got your um book sent to you yesterday good to see you nancy good morning okay so let's roll up our sleeves let's pray us up get our spirits ready for what god has i am so excited about today's scripture i just have to tell you i was scared to death of it it was a hard scripture but god's got good stuff for us here we go hold my hands good morning ellen lord we praise you and worship you we glorify you you are the king of kings the lord of lords you are the master of the universe you are victorious you have won the war is over and lord we fight with you we march with you we are in that procession of victory with you. Got to pray that ears would be open, eyes of our hearts would be open to see the eternal picture of things, that we would understand a little bit more, that it would go a little bit deeper, and that we would walk in victory more and more each day, smelling like Jesus. We love you and we praise you and I ask you to help me teach this. It's in Jesus' name I pray and all God's people said, Amen. Meg Jamili, good morning. Kim Andrews, my friend, good to see you this morning. Okay, are y'all ready for a really interesting, I think, teaching this morning? We are in, actually, so, if you have the body bread list and you're looking at the list, I skipped one. We're supposed to be in Philippians today, but this morning I went past Philippians and we are in this morning, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Tomorrow we'll go back up and do Philippians. And if y'all are going, where's the reading plan? You can go to wordsbyandylee.com and the body bread reading plan is there with a printable, with the scriptures, and with questions and prompts. But so this morning, turn in your Bibles, if you have your Bible with you, oops, Turn to 2 Corinthians 2.14. 2 Corinthians 2.14. And this is our bite. We are studying about being thankful and all the different things we can be thankful for this week. Hey, Debbie Johnson. Good morning, Kelly. Good to see you today, girl. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 2.14 writes, But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. Let me read that one more time. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. So my question this morning is, what's that smell? It could have been like, 
what do you smell like? Or I wanted to put, you know, victory in Jesus. We're on Team Jesus. We're going to be talking about why we smell like Jesus and what that means, what that aroma was, what that smell was. But first, I have to say, we got to look at the context. And the reason why we have to look at the context is because of the very first word in that verse. It is but. And anytime anything starts with but, it's kind of like when it starts with therefore. You've got to figure out why it's therefore. And so when you see it start with but, then like, oh, we need to look at what's before that. Michelle, good morning, Teresa. Glad you're with us today. So but, so let's talk about the context of this um, this verse, the context of this book, it's a letter. It was written to the Corinthian church. It's the second letter that Paul wrote. And the whole point of the letter is he's defending, most of it, he's defending his authority and his ability to teach them anything. And as I read through this letter this morning, at least the beginning of it, I just got this sense that Paul was really trying to say, look, guys, I am human. I am human. He's talking about his humanity. He's yet at the same time, he's defending his authority as the apostle. But this letter is a letter of his humanity, his humility, as well as his authority in Jesus. And you're like, well, how can that happen? How can you, why would you talk about your humanity and your humility as well as your authority in Jesus? But amen, do we only have authority in Jesus as we come just as humans, as humans. Flawed yet called, I just happened to wear this today. I don't know if you can see it, but a, a good friend made this for me, Flawed Yet Called, which is um, part of my book, Mary Like Me, Flawed Yet Called, because everybody called by God. All of us called into ministry. All of us called into the faith. We are just human. Look, there's Mr. Hank. He wanted to make it. Uh, say hello this morning in appearance. Yay! You got to see Hank today. So back to back to squirrel. Sorry, squirrel. Coming back to the lesson today. So so he's talking about his humanity and what I love about this on his humanity. He says um, he's conflicted. He wants to come see them. But then he decides, maybe I should just write a letter to him. So he writes a letter. His letter caused them grief. But then he explains that the grief that he caused them turned out to be a good thing. So you see this tension and confliction here that Paul has. I love that he's human. Guys, they're human. When they're human, then it just makes me know that it's okay and I can serve God too, right? conflicted he wants to see them and he doesn't see them and he causes them grief but the grief is good he explains in verse 4 second corinthians um 2 verse 4 he says for i wrote to you out of great distress and anguish of heart and with many tears not to grieve you but to let you know the depth of my love for you so he's saying Gosh, I had to write you some hard stuff. I was crying as I did it, but I did it because I love you and I want the best for you. Sometimes we have to tell people things that they don't want to hear, but we do so out of love and kindness, right? We do it because we love them. Sometimes we just want people to agree with us, but iron sharpens iron, right? We need those spiritual friends, those sisters and brothers in Christ who are going to say to us, Oh, Andy, that's not quite right, girl. We, we want you to walk in that authority and the strength and the power and the smell good of Jesus. So let me help you a little bit in your thinking. It's not quite right. And so that's what his letter did. He told him, It was hard for me to do that. But I did that because... I love you. And then in verse 10, I just love this. Look at verse 10. I'm in, I'm in chapter 2. Um, verse 10, he says, um, if you forgive anyone, I also forgive them. So he's, they're going through some hard stuff in their church. There's been sin in their church. They've had to correct that sin in his church. He says, I forgive them. Um, I also forgive them. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything... Um, 
anything. I for, uh, I have forgiven it in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not uh, unaware of his scheme. So he's saying, I know that the enemy wants to just put, you know, this division in the church. Anybody, anybody experience that? All churches experience that. The enemy wants to divide us. But he's saying, love each other, forgive each other. Yes, we've got to be, we've got to give each other the hard words, but forgive each other and love each other. Don't let Satan have a foothold and divide your church. And then he says in verse 12, Now when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door for me. I love this part, y'all. This is one of my favorite parts of this teaching. Um, I don't know, I like it all. But he said, um, I found that the door was open for me, and I, but I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. And I just love this. Hey, Lisa Howard, good morning. He's saying, the Lord opened the door for me to go to ministry someplace, and I just, I just didn't have peace about it because I had to find Titus. I needed Titus. And so he said, I just kept on going. I didn't go there. Somebody needed to hear that today because you feel like you you did not walk through an open door that God had for you and you think you missed it, but you didn't miss it. It's okay. Look what he says after that. And that's where he says, but... <laughs> and that, comes, that brings us to our bite for today. He says, but... Thanks be to God who always leads us into a triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere, no matter where we are, the fragrance of the knowledge of him. So I think I feel like he's saying I missed that open door because I just didn't have peace about it. But, but God, but everywhere I go, no matter where I go, what I'm doing, I smell like Jesus. And Jesus' smell is a smell of victory. So let's look at this triumphal procession in Christ. So everything that I studied about this verse, it all goes back to the, the culture at the time, the Roman um, army at the time, whenever they would win a battle, they would come through the town with the with the king and the army, you know, generals and the soldiers and those that they have captive, that they have captive. And then, and they would have this fragrance. They would have these smelly, um, like incense all around them. So you would smell this procession. Everything I read talked about that. But the more I studied this verse, the more I looked at this verse, and I mean, I've read it. I like read this over and over and I thought, you know, this doesn't say anything about the captives. It's talking about the triumphal procession. And so all I see is Jesus as the king walking and then his army behind him. And y'all, I see us as the army of God walking behind him in this triumphal procession of Christ. And let me tell you about that king and what the king smelled like. My, my friends, the Hebrew kings were anointed. And I want to read this to you a little bit. It's from a book called Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus. I highly recommend this book. Anne Spangler and Lois Bergberg. I finally learned how to say her name. It's T-B-E-R-B-E-R-G. But listen to what they write about the anointing. And this is what I think he's talking about, being fragrance of Christ, that aroma of Christ. So um, it's she wrote, So Messiah, Messiah, the Hebrew word for Messiah is, um, it means, it means anointed one. The Greek is Christos, Christ, which means the anointed one. And then she says, but why the anointed one? The word Messiah alludes to the ceremony used to set apart someone chosen by God, like a king or a priest. Instead of being crowned during a coronation, Hebrew kings were anointed with sacred oil. Sacred oil perfumed with extremely expensive spices. 
only used for consecrating objects in the temple and for anointing priests and kings. The sacred anointing oil would have been more valuable than diamonds. Hello, did you hear that? More valuable than diamonds. The marvelous scent that it left behind acted like an invisible crown conferring an aura of holiness on its recipients. Everything and everyone with that unique fragrance was recognized as belonging to God in a special way. In the ancient Middle East, the majesty of a king was expressed not only by what he wore, his jewelry and robes, but by his royal aroma. After Even after a king was first anointed, he would perfume his robes with precious oils for special occasions. Listen to a line from the king of David's wedding. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy and your robes with the fragrance of myrrh and the aloes of cassia. So, what, so the kings were anointed with this fragrance. And all those around the king and who touched the king and were part of his kingdom or his royal procession smelled like the king. So when was Jesus anointed? Jesus was anointed by two women. One, Mary of Bethany, another a woman who was a prostitute came and anointed Jesus. Do you remember that Mary and Mary uh, Bethany? They said, "Why use this expensive perfume that could be? It's worth years' wages, right?" But let me read. But the significance of Mary's action. It seems like the smell of the perfume with which Mary anointed Jesus would have lingered for days. God may have used Mary's active devotion to telegraph a subtle but powerful message. Everywhere Jesus went during the final days of his life, he had the fragrance of royalty. Jesus smelled like a king. Imagine in the garden at Gethsemane as Judas and the guards approached Jesus to arrest him. The guards must have sniffed the air and wondered who stood before them. When Jesus was on trial, mocked, whipped, and stripped naked, even then, for then the aroma may have clung to him. What an amazing God we have. And then she writes, But thanks be to God, who always leads us into triumphal procession in Christ, and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ, the anointed one, among whom, those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, and to other the fragrance of life. Hmm. What's that smell? What do you smell like? Hi, hey, it's the air. Good morning. Do you smell like royalty? Do you smell like Jesus? As we walk around, some people smell us and they're like, oh, can get away. And others smell us and they want that aroma, that smell to So the aroma of Christ is the smell of kingship, that smell of victory. Y'all, we have victory in Christ. And I think this is what is so cool. This is what Paul is saying. He's saying, I'm human. I'm humble. I'm conflicted. I keep on, I, I had this door open. I didn't walk into it because I didn't have peace. So I went the other way. But it didn't matter because we had victory in Jesus, and everywhere Paul went, everywhere we go, as long as we we are claiming that victory in our faith, in our love, in our ministry of Jesus Christ, we're going to smell like him, and there's a victory in Jesus everywhere we go. We are the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved. That word saved is sozo. Everybody say sozo. Hey, James, good morning. So sozo means to save, deliver, and to make whole. Somebody say amen. Did you know that every day he's just making us whole more and more each day? 
he says, he says, to the one we are the smell of death and to the other the fragrance of life. And he was equal to such a task. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity like men sent from God. He's saying, I'm not doing this just for you or to make money. I'm doing this because I'm sent by God and I've got to tell you about Jesus. And I'm going to tell you about the victory. And I'm going to tell you that you smell good everywhere you go with Jesus on you. There is victory in God. In Jesus, every time he spreads everywhere the fragrance of knowing him, of knowing him, of the knowledge of him, and knowing him. And that's that Gnosko knowledge, it's that experiential knowledge. When you know Jesus, you just can't be quiet about it. You have to share it with others, how you know him. When you know Jesus, he drips off you. You can't help but smell like him. And some people hate it, and some people are drawn to it. The bottom line is, we've got nothing great to give but Jesus, right? Stick with him. Follow him. Let him lead us. Follow him. Follow him. Who are you following today? Follow him and let him lead us in this victorious procession. So what are you thankful for today? Is it, is it that he uses you to spread the smell of knowing Jesus? I want to close today with a little bit from This Day We Fight. This book, I've given several of these books away. Just love it. Maybe I'm going to have to give away The Sitting at the Feet of Jesus next. Um, so stay tuned. You have to watch to find out when the next giveaway is. But I want to finish today with the words from Francis Fringapain. To be conformed to Jesus is to walk in his anointing. As we near the end of the age, the true church will be increasingly identified by Christ's threefold anointing. And that anointing is the priesthood and the kingship. He says, we will be given to intercession as priests to the believers. We will be prophetic in our discernment and communication of God's word, whether the word comes to teach, comfort, or evangelize, or warn. And in all of life's fears, we will walk in a holy, kingly anointing as ambassadors of Christ and his kingship in heaven. More on the wisdom of this in the next chapter. Sorry, we're not going to read that. For our world to recognize true Christianity, it must witness one reality. People becoming Christ-like in prayer, in the prophetic word, and in governmental authority. We, for the true church is growing in maturity, it will be united in the full anointing of Christ, and transformation will follow. My friends, God has a huge purpose of eternal proportions on your life. You are special. You have been chosen. You are anointed. You're on the right team. You're on team Jesus, the one that's already won, the one that smells good, the one that's won the victory. Hold my hands. Let me pray you up. Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. And we just say, pour it on, Lord. Anoint us more and more with the fragrance of Christ, Lord. We want to smell like you everywhere we go. Help us pour into the word. And as we study and we pray and we recognize spirit around us, that you would just drip off of us everywhere we go, that we would share that victory of Christ. We would share the love of Jesus. We would share the forgiveness of sins, the grace of God, his chesed that's never ending. Thank you, Lord. I pray all those listening might rise up today in their anointing. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen and a. Man, thank you for joining me today. That was so much fun. I'm 
It's so much fun when you have to dig and study and go, God, I don't understand that. If you are reading scripture and you don't understand it, don't give up. Study, read commentaries, and then let Holy Spirit lead you. The Holy Spirit led me to understanding this better today. So just keep on studying and don't give up. Tomorrow I'll be back, Lord willing. We'll be in Philippians 13. Six and I will ask for prayer. I'm just still with a little bit of vertigo and dizziness, which I'm fine when I'm sitting, but when I stand, it's different. So I'd appreciate your prayers. I'll see you tomorrow. Y'all go out there, be a threat to the enemy. As I said, God has eternal purposes for you today. Smell good. Bye.